So, Sarah, very nice to see you today. Thank you for joining me. Um, I'm looking forward to a really interesting conversation with you. Um, what would be great is if you can just introduce yourself so that uh, everyone knows who you are and what you do, and then we can jump straight into this into this session. That's great. Thank you, David, for having me. Um, we know each other for so long, and finally, we are seeing each other in person virtually after <laughs> a few years. Yes. So I'm quite yeah. happy to be to be on 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 your show. Um, so Thank for you. everyone on uh, listening or or seeing me, uh, I'm Sarah Robbins. I um, am in procurement for most of my career. Um, it started in Latin America and um, currently working for AstraZeneca, heading third-party risk. Um, but uh, the conversation today will be about third-party risk, ESG, sustainability, all the hot and sexy <laughs> stuff that is going on in procurement at the moment. And um, looking forward to talk about a little bit about myself and uh, hopefully inspire some debate in the Absolutely. procurement function. Amazing. That's really good, Sarah. Thank you. Well, look, um, if we start, let, let's start with the functional piece, right? What, what, um, when did your interest in procurement and risk management begin? Funny story. Sorry. <laughs> it happened to me, David, um, procurement, actually. Mm -hmm. I was studying to be, I studied international business mm -hmm. and international relations. So for me, it was a little bit about becoming a diplomat. Mm -hmm. And um, suddenly I heard about this internship at General Electric and decided to apply. I didn't quite know what it was about, but I thought it would be interesting they wanted someone that was fluent in spanish and um i had that already so i thought why not and guess what the role was to be an intern in procurement <laughs> and, and when i got to familiarize myself with what the internship was about um i thought that the skill set was quite similar to what i was studying so it was about negotiation and win-win and driving value to society. And I thought, wow, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So I had a conflict at university because everybody wanted me to go pursue the diplomatic um, um, uh, area and, and function. Mm -hmm. But actually, I fell in love with GE, um, mm -hmm. the growth that they were going through in Latin America and procurement. Mm -hmm. And that's how I met our friend Tanya Mias as well. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, who, was, uh, who was the 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 big boss at the time in Latin America for procurement. So it all comes together, as you can see. Mm -hmm. I think risk management come, came to me a bit later in my mm. career, specifically coming um, in the UK and being more exposed to a developed market. I mm -hmm. think risk became part of um, a must-have, right, mm -hmm. in everything that we do. So the interest for risk management came a little bit later. I did a lot of uh, investigations and compliance audits and things like that, but really when you see things such as the um, uh, financial crisis or um, the impact of a tsunami um, mm -hmm. and all this disruption supply chain, that's when you start to think about, you know, um, procurement has a role to play in there mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. can be a bit more prepared. And um, I remember in GE, we were also talking about... Um, uh, business continuity plan. So mm -hmm. that is quite interesting when you think about resilience. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think all that procurement thing kind of became about uh, risk. And coming from Brazil um, and from Latin America, which is, uh, is still considered a, a, a high-risk region for certain uh, mm -hmm. activities, mm -hmm. I think it was embedded throughout my career, mm -hmm. if you see mm -hmm. what I mean. So yep. you always think about bribery, corruption. You always think about transparency yes. whenever you're dealing with your supplier. So I think those two things came together. And um, obviously, we'll talk about it a bit later, but sustainability all comes with <laughs> it, right? Indeed. Yeah, it does. If you're in the, the region, then you kind of um, think of 
adding value and so uh, society impacting positively the society. Mm -hmm. So all of that uh, was what inspired me to to do what I do today. That's, it's, it's, that's great. And, and actually, there's a really nice segue into my next question, which was around coming from a developing country, right? How did you manage to engineer your career away from being a regional procurement uh, person into the global aspect? You know, I get this question a lot. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think because of my name, some people think that I'm uh, not Brazilian. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not necessarily a Brazilian name, which yes. makes it funny. <laughs> but I think um, it was a lot of perseverance. I think um, there are many things that, um, that, that explain that career path. I was quite lucky to have mentors and leaders mm -hmm. that really early in my career um, the, uh, helped me to shape what longer term would be for me yes. in procurement. And I think executing on that longer term plan mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was uh, quite critical and required mm -hmm. a lot of perseverance because being a woman, being a woman and mm -hmm. being a woman of color mm -hmm. not necessarily helped to straight away open the, the, all the paths. Yes. So you, you kind of have to um, have a lot of determination and perseverance to yes. get to where you want to be. Yes. And I think um, I was quite lucky to have uh, a, a very amazing mentor um, mm -hmm. through my career that really saw the potential in me mm -hmm. and helped, helped me to navigate through a regional role to a global role yes now there is an element of gravity right i call it gravity because as you grow every that every now and then you get those comments that drag you down yes <laughs> yes yeah uh, but i think um especially with procurement there is so much value in mm -hmm. um the re the regional experience in today in my role i i, ha I have a global roles for the past mm -hmm. uh, eight years mm -hmm. so every time that i am sitting on a global the forum or um, uh, global governance meeting, steerco, you name it. I always ping back the idea of the region because mm. ultimately they are delivering on the global yes. strategy. Yes, and I think that value is so appreciated by the region and by the leadership team in businesses mm -hmm. because sometimes those nitty and gritty details that people will think when they mm -hmm. are executing are not necessarily visible unless you have that experience. Yes. So I think that also helped me to navigate through a regional role to a global role, giving visibility of the value for that. I, th I think, I, I, and, and that's really interesting. And I think um, just, just to sort of pull to a point you've, you've sort of raised there, which was GE as a company, you've also got to have a company, haven't you, that appreciates diversity and that appreciates the power of the collective is better than the individual right because that framework and the mentors that you talk about they've got to give you that platform right to show yourself and show your capability absolutely absolutely i remember and and she does that brilliantly to this mm -hmm. date um the forum the the nurturing of talent is mm -hmm. believing on talent is focusing on your strengths yeah. so i think for me um, when I was getting a feedback about um, something that was, uh, we today call it unconscious bias, right? Yes, but yes. back in the day, yes. it was just feedback. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Someone else would come and say, well, actually, you have this, this, and this that you can take forward. Yes. So don't get stuck on that little yes. thing and focus on your strength. And I think I took that... Um, to, to every single word, right? Yes. And I remember my mentor saying, um, you're quite talented. You, you need to, to dare more. Yes. Right? The impossible yes. is not, is not, does not exist. So you are doing yes. this very well in Latin America today. Take it globally. And, and that's what I, I really believed. Mm -hmm. And I think there is a lot of power in mentorship and yes. a lot of power in representation, yes. right? Having yeah. a leader that um, you can resonate and you absolutely. can look and say, oh, I can be that person, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, Absol that's absolutely. That's really important. 
Yeah, it is. Yeah, no, that's really good. Um, supply chain. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in, indeed, uh, that's that's right. And you know, um, I mean, it is. And, and I had this in a, in another in- interview that I did recently. Um, you know, the question I asked was, "How is it to be in a ma- in what's traditionally been a male-dominated environment?" Right? Because supply chain um, is different to procurement, although it's all one and the same part of the business. Um, and this brings me on to my next question, Sarah. I, I've done a very nice segue, hopefully, there, which is, you know, TPRM, the so third party risk management, ESG and sustainability, like supply chain, are often siloed into their own little areas in business. Why, why do you think that is? Because it's, it, it should all be integrated, shouldn't it? Yes, um, that's a very good point. And, you know, um, during my maternity leave, I reflected a lot about Mm. it, actually, because um, I think um, there is there are two things there. One is that individually this functions. Mm. So if you think about third party risk, Mm -hmm. if you think about ESG, which ESG um, in some companies is, is, is around the enterprise risk yes. and governance. Yes. Um, and if you think about sustainability as a function, mm-hmm. then those areas, um, and I'm being very generic here, those areas historically have been a bit under-resourced. So that in itself is a problem because it means that you, if you're under-resourced, you can only do you can only keep the lights on, yes. right? So then what happens is that in the past few years, we have had in the UK and in Europe, as you said, as we were talking just before the meeting, we had Brexit, then we mm-hmm. have pandemic, and now we, mm-hmm. we have a war. Mm. So how, how do you grow? What is, what is it that is, um, yes. where is the grass greener? Yes. Right. That's yes. the question. Mm-hmm. And then um, I think what happened is that there is an element of uh, people, but mm-hmm. I also think that there is an element of technology. So historically, we have been do- doing transparency and pushing for transparency in payment, in processes, in, in yes. integrity of, of the process, right? Yes. And I think now is the time to take this forward to say, okay, so if my supplier is based in a high risk region, what is the impact for me? Mm-hmm. And what mm-hmm. is the impact of the supply of my supply? So this is risk, but it's also sustainability because it's yes. looking at the geopolitical risk. Mm-hmm. And it's also important for the enterprise risk and the brand value of the company because mm-hmm. it's human rights. So it all comes together. I don't think it is there yet, but I think with the time and as we evolve through this crisis that we are going through worldwide, I think that um, technology has a key role to play to um, give the transparency that we will allow these three functions to work yes. to, to work better together. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, it's we, we could spend days just talking about um, ES, ESG. So I'm just going to rein myself back in from there for just a moment, actually. We'll, we'll, I'll ask you a, a different question. Um, what are your thoughts about how risk and sustainability are linked then? Because they are, and you, you've just touched on it now. So to, sort of talk me through that, because not everyone has that same viewpoint, do they? No, and I think it is, uh, I think the when I was um, thinking about, uh, I think the first thing actually, you have to take a step back and reflect. Mm. So what is risk and what is sustainability? Right. So when we talk about risk, we are usually talking about protecting the company from a financial perspective or from a brand perspective, so mm-hmm. reputation um, and, and financial, really. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think with with the world evolving, this reputation aspect is increasing, mm-hmm. which means that you need to look at things such as um, labor loss or um, human rights in general. You need to look into uh, your commitments, your mm-hmm. net zero commitments, because yeah. companies all over, all over the world are making serious commitments mm-hmm. to decrease their, their carbon footprint. Yeah. So then you, you think, is this a risk or is this another thing that I'm doing? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in my view, it's both. 
is mm-hmm. looking at risk with the sustainability lens. And it needs to be in everything you do. So if you're doing an RFP, you should be thinking about selecting the supplier that is aligned with your strategic commitments. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you're onboarding a supplier that you already chose, it's good for you to get the awareness of where that supplier is going with their sustainability com- commitments. Yes. And then when you're evaluating the performance of that third party, then it is, is like, are they going to meet or are they similar to what I do? Mm. Are we are we talking with uh, the same language here? So I think um, in general, the key is to put sustainability as the DNA of risk management yes. rather than the other way around. Uh-huh. So I don't see sustainability as a risk. I see sustainability as um, the framework of yes. where the risk comes from. Yes, absolutely. That's that's really interesting. Um, you're, you're a massive advocate, right, for sustainability and ESG, as we can see, right? Um, <laughs> why? Uh, it's, a, it's something that um, has come quite close to my heart. I mm. think coming from Latin America, and, and this is something I have said a couple of times in the past month to different people, but I think what happens is that when you're in a, in a growth market and when you are in a market that is exposed to a certain risk, such as mm. bribery and corruption, I think things become part of your DNA of how you do it. So partnership and collaboration with third mm. parties are the way to go because in some instances, you have to explain what is right and what is wrong yes. so yeah. that they can actually take a step back and understand, okay, so this is wrong because of that and has an impact in society because mm-hmm. ultimately that's what it is about. So I remember in Latin America doing uh, selecting suppliers already thinking of the female representation. We would ask the, the question on our RFP process. And when we were deciding, we would influence the business to say, look, this, this supplier is not only with a cost that is competitive, but is also thinking about giving back to society. Water, car fleet, oh my God, I remember doing uh, checking the fuel consumption of, of cars. And this was 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And we were thinking, gosh, how, how can we make this more efficient mm-hmm. from a cost perspective, but mm-hmm. also for to say, oh, our fleet is actually greener, mm-hmm. right? So he's looking mm-hmm. over your shoulders. And <clears throat> my competitors are doing um, fleet as well, but are they looking at how green mm-hmm. they are? So we were doing that 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. So I think now in the past five to maybe five years from now, I can see a lot of sustainability uh, being talked about in, in the UK and in Europe. Mm-hmm. But if you go to countries such as Africa, um, mm-hmm. countries in Africa or countries in Latin America, such mm-hmm. as Brazil, I mm-hmm. think you will find that people are already executing on a more sustainable procurement mm-hmm. um, processes just because is the only option that there is. Mm. is to give back because it's already interlinked with your brand. Yeah. So that that is is impossible not to feel passionate I think about such uh, an interesting function. If you think about cost savings is interesting to some extent, but if you think about the positive impact that you can drive yeah. in society and and that you can feel um in everything you do that that is what makes procurement so sexy for me yes yes that sustainability aspect that you can yes. say okay my supplier i'm doing here something that is really positive and, and yes. i'm changing the world yeah ab- absolutely and i think um <clears throat> for me and i and i talk to a lot of different companies in different locations and and different levels of leadership and i think um <clears throat> One thing that I find really interesting is the number of people who have a personal passion for driving ESG and sustainability. And I think that's where you start to get proper momentum, isn't it? Because it's a vocation as much as it is a business target, right? Um, And I think 
it it has a, a has a really interesting positive impact not only on the internal community of employees but on the brand and it makes companies uh, a potential business of choice for people who are looking right um, you know va- values and ethics i think have never been higher on the agenda than they are currently and this is all being seen across the world at the moment when as you, as you said again as we talked about before we started recording um, when companies are looking at their brand values people are looking and seeing what are people's responses what are the organizations and the corporations responses to what's going on in ukraine um, and it's it's become a lot bigger headline i think for a lot of the businesses than they anticipated it would be and attracting talent right i mm. think uh, um I think procurement uh, has grown so much in the past mm. 10 years, isn't it? Yeah, I remember when I started, I was, I was going to say, I was saying, oh, I, I work in procurement. People, oh, procurement. <laughs> uh, but now procurement is a hot topic, right? So when you mm. talk about procurement, oh, that's interesting. I have a yes. question for you. Yes, yes. So everyone has some conversation going mm. on that involves procurement. But I think, um, especially thinking about the next generation of leadership, mm. I think is about inspiring them to keep yes. that agenda. Yes. And, uh, and, and I think uh, with what we have seen in the world, especially with the pandemic, um, the resilience and that uh, motivation to wake up in the morning comes from doing something more, yes. right? It's yes. not just a job, it's going beyond yes. that, that box, right? Yes. That yeah. Sometimes we find ourselves, and that comes with um, initiatives such as sustainability. Absolutely and um, supporting each other in, in the case of, of Ukraine and um, mm. doing, doing, doing what we can to make the world a better place, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I think uh, procurement plays a key role in that agenda. I, I thought that the interview with uh, Sherry Hinnish mm. uh, was brilliant because I think yes. she nailed it on the head. I think it's, it's quite important that you drive that agenda. But for me... Um, is also about inspiring the next generation of procurement leaders. Definitely. Definitely. And showing people from other functions that procurement has a big role to play in this, yes. in everything we do. So we, uh, and I think it's a debate, right? I would love to, <laughs> to open the debate for other yes. people to say, yes, there is this, but I think... Yes. Um, we all, post-pandemic, we all experience this um, uh, talent, uh, great resignation and talent yes. uh, moving from one place to the other. And I would love to see procurement being a pole to attract those high-skilled but highly Absolutely. motivated individuals. Absolutely. That can see the potential of, of the function. That is something that um, would be a great outcome for procurement yeah. in general. Yeah, no, I, I agree on that. Um, what, what do you think the future of sustainability in ESG looks like with supply chain and with supply chain management? I think um, there are three things that currently are in my mind and mm-hmm. I, I keep going back for within the, the, them. And I, I, in my mind, there, there is a technology, mm-hmm. there is death, mm-hmm. and there is transparency in reporting. Mm-hmm. So I think um, the technology, in my experience, plays a role to to bring to surface yeah. what works and what doesn't. Because historically, I think a, a lot of the processes in third party risk, in sustainability, you mm. name it, have been quite manual. Mm-hmm. So I think bringing technology will be a key element to understand where actually we are mm-hmm. with what we do. Mm-hmm. And then the next thing is death is, is okay, um, it's not only reporting on the net zero or commitment, it's about what is the actual impact of yes. that, mm-hmm. the social impact, and, mm-hmm. and how is that shaping a new governance model within the company, right? So yes. I think there is that element um, 
of uh, depth that I think is quite important, depth and impact, mm -hmm. and then transparency. I think <laughs> short term, you see a lot of a lot of commitments and a lot of um, um, uh, measurements and people reporting and everything. But I think mm -hmm. with time, uh, these numbers will be held accountable, right? Yes, so yes. transparency is, is quite an important element um, of this framework. And whenever people ask me the question around how do you see um, the future, I think, I think these three elements are not the only ones, again, mm -hmm. open for the debate. If someone mm -hmm. can ping me on LinkedIn and <laughs> give additional ideas, I'm open because I'm quite passionate about this topic, yes. but I think the, the, these three topics are uh, coming back as a, as a cycle in my mm. mind. It's, it's um, how technology can play a role to drive more of the transparency. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll be held accountable for that in the future. I, th I think, um, and sorry if I'm cutting over you, but um, I think also it's about interpretation, isn't it? Um, because you can have the data, you can, you can have the target, but actually, you need sometimes people who are commercially minded and who are innovative, who can say, well, actually, let me see the data. Let me drive it. And, and then they can interpret it and actually relay it properly um, with a different Absolutely. perspective. It, absolutely. And I think that open for interpretation mm. is where the transparency will be so important because... Yeah. Um, as you say, someone with a commercial mind, mindset may look and say, okay, this is, your, this is your target, this is what you achieve, and so what? Mm. <laughs> it's true. Right? So what? Uh, <laughs> and, and that so what is so important. So I think it is an evolving process, right? Yeah. Um, I, I, what, I, what I see is that uh, especially small, small companies and mm. startups, and, and things like that these companies are starting to think about it and they don't have the answer but the first the the most important thing is to have the first step yes and for big companies on the other hand is to be humble and open mm. to understand how their partners are doing as well because sometimes the answer to the best interpretation comes from the partner Yes. You don't have to have all the answers. I think the way I think about it, David, is like a, com a positive competitiveness. Mm -hmm. So everyone wants to be successful. And yes. hopefully the world, we, we can all save the world, isn't that's it? it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll all benefit, won't we, then, if everyone's, you know, that's, that, that, that's exactly right. Um, that's, that's brilliant. And, and look, um, let's come on to a little bit more personal side for you now, right? Um, how do you find it being a female leader in procurement now compared to when you enter the profession? Because not only are you in a different continent, right, but you're also in a different era, right? So how, how have you found that journey? Totally different. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a whole new world. I, I remember, um, and, and again, I think... Um, in Latin America, I remember our uh, targets in the office was uh, heavily focused on gender. Mm -hmm. So we, we used to have a lot of women in leadership positions, right? And mm -hmm. uh, I remember at some point we had a CEO in, in, in Latin America that was a, a woman. Mm -hmm. So that leadership was quite, uh, uh, was like, oh, the impossible is possible. It was a, it was a good yeah. environment to be. Yeah. And I think when I came to, when I crossed the ocean, what I found was that um, I was actually the only woman in the call. Mm. <laughs> so I was like, oh, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> and not, not unusual to be the only one, the only woman of color in the call or mm. in a meeting or or in, in, in any of that. So I, I, it took me some time to think, oh, that's kind of where we are here, mm. is that when you're in a regional level, you may find more diversity yes. than when you actually get to the sea level mm. or the, the global level, as you call it, or, 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 or whatever. So I, I, I started to feel that the more you grow in your career, the less representation you may find 
And I think this is changing now, um, uh, especially in procurement. You see a lot of uh, amazing female leaders, female CPOs, and, and their names are being talked about. Yeah. So that helps to drive that um, representation that is so important. Yes. But I think it is um, the way I see it is not as an issue. I see it as an opportunity. Yeah. Whenever there is a gap, there is actually an opportunity to be different, to Absolutely. be genuine, yes. to be inclusive, right? So yes. I am quite a, and, and we may not know the answers. Diversity mm -hmm. may come with its pros and cons, right? So it may require adaptation. Mm -hmm. But all we can do, and in my case as a leader, all I can do is to make sure that I can inspire other female colleagues Absolutely. and support other female colleagues the same way that I was supported. Absolutely. It's giving back. Yeah, ab absolutely. That's brilliant. Um, so tell me then, who, who, who sort of had the biggest influence on your career and why? <laughs> so many people. Uh, I, I'm quite lucky with that. <laughs> uh, um, but there are a few names that I thought um, about, uh, you know, uh, Obviously, our our friend Tanya Mias is yes. uh, an ongoing presence yes. in my life. Yes. She, yes. You know, it, the, the interesting thing, I think, is that she was featured in the Harvard mm -hmm. Business Review and as, as um, a talent for Latin America, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, as a woman. And if you read the, the challenges that she's been through, and I was working with her and mm -hmm. I didn't even know. And I'm like, how could you achieve so much with all yes. that going yes. on? Yes. <laughs> so it's yeah. definitely an inspiration. I think my mentor, Dave Van Devin, he's retired now. Mm -hmm. But Dave led, um, he was the general manager of procurement for GE mm -hmm. Healthcare for okay. many years. And Dave made history. I, mm. I think uh, Dave was um, my mentor, a father figure, mm -hmm. uh, you name it. I don't even know that Dave... Uh, can can realize the 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 inspiration that he was for me and yes. the honesty in procurement. If you mm. went to the table with David, you felt that he was there to represent healthcare, right? Yes. It was like yes. a heavy lift on the table. So mm -hmm. that was nice to nice, see. Yeah. And uh, Maria Di Pietro, Paul Whitaker. So Maria is now in America, but Maria led procurement in, in GE um, mm -hmm. in the UK. Maria was decisive. It was mm -hmm. amazing to see the woman um, leading. So I think that decisiveness um, of, uh, and, and sometimes being demanding, right? Mm -hmm. Accepting that mm -hmm. you need to be demanding. <clears throat> you need to want more. You need to be ambitious, yes. ambitious. Yes. Yes. I think Maria taught me that, and Paul Whitaker also mm -hmm. uh, taught me that. And most recently, I think uh, um, I'm, I am absolutely in love with what I read coming from Jean Massey in sustainability. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, Rachel Legg is a CPO of Johnson Matthey as well. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Everything that she posts about diversity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, I love it. Mm -hmm. So lots of people, and obviously <laughs> our dear... John Dixon, isn't <laughs> yes, it? Uh, yes. You just interviewed a couple mm -hmm. of months ago. Absolutely, yeah. So another inspiration to be in his organization today. So I yeah. think um, there are lots of uh, good people out there. And uh, I think to make that transition from regional to global, yes. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be <clears throat> able to do that without Dave. And I yes. think having the right mentor yes. on your side was key so yeah. i think uh, I'll, I'll remember dave forever that's 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 really good and, and i think um you know it 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 shows doesn't it and and i mean it's i mean i've, I've heard this for years sarah right um people buy people don't they and you know in procurement that's no, nothing nothing truer said it's it's about you know being authentic isn't it it's authenticity yes. And it's about honesty and it's and it's all of that stuff, which actually, you know, really drives towards the ESG piece again, you know, and being that inspirational and articulate and authentic individual. Because if you've got those qualities, the business you're in probably has those qualities and that Absolutely. feeds, doesn't it? It feeds the wheel. Absolutely. And the wheel is turning. And, definitely, and turning definitely. quite quickly. 
right? Definitely, so yeah. I think I think um, what we can we what we can do as procurement professionals is, and you're absolutely right. And I think in some functions you have sometimes the ability to to deal with people that are highly talented, but mm. not necessarily you would have dinner with them. <laughs> Yes, yes. But in procurement, because the ten the tension can get so heavy mm. sometimes, it's also good to meet people and to work with people that you make friends for life. Yes. So I, I think that is um, um, is uh, what my team calls my team today calls feelings, right? So it's mm. about that that personal interaction is so important. Yes. And I think um, it is really uh, what takes it forward and extracts the above and beyond of people. Yes. Yeah. It is not doing just what you do. It's, if you're in risk, think about sustainability. Yes. If you're in finance, think about sustainability. Yes. If you are, what can you do to change what you're doing? What can you do to challenge the status yes. quo in a positive way? Yes, absolutely. Um, brilliant. Look, it's been really good. The last, the last question I've got for you, Sarah, is what could what advice sorry would you give someone who wants to start a career in procurement and influence sustainability in ESG? Oh, that is. <laughs> <laughs> I I I I would say that um, many many things. As you know, I talk a lot, mm. but um, I think that one thing is to challenge uh, mm. what you hear and mm. do not accept anything as right or wrong so i think it's quite an imp- if if anyone is joining procurement or joining sustainability or uh, third party risk or you name it if anything now mm-hmm. nothing is set on stone yes so you have the ability to build your own so leverage your learnings your mm. your your ability to research if you have a research background, if you have a STEM, right? Leverage your degree, leverage mm. what you are learning from university, bring it to the business, to the private sector. So important. So I think that the that challenge, positive challenge, right? It's not, not the, the a negative thing, but making sure that, that you don't take the first thing you hear as truth. Mm. And I think... Um, <clears throat> When I joined uh, procurement in the beginning of my career, I used to to think sometimes that everyone knew the answer. (laughs) So I would not ask the question. Yes. (laughs) But I think today uh, the world has evolved. So ask the question, make uh, make the freedom that we have an advantage. Absolutely. And ask the question. And if you don't agree with the answer, ask the question again. Mm. (laughs) <laughs> I like that. That's, that's, that's great advice. I, I like that. Um, I might coin that phrase, make freedom the advantage. I like that. That's, a, that's got a nice yeah. ring to it. And it's, it's absolutely spot on. I, I, you know, I remember when I got into um, when I got into recruitment all those years ago, um, uh, one of my my old boss said to me every single time, just think of two questions. Who else and what else? You know, it's an open question and it will give you so much information. And it will give you, therefore, a better balance and a better understanding. And it's and it's great advice because, you know, as you've just said there, it is about challenging, isn't it? And it's not about challenging to be awkward. It's about challenging to understand. And that's... I think challenging that's what the right be. things, isn't it? Sorry, mm. Dave. I no, think no, 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 it's good. <laughs> it's good. I think it's challenging the right things, isn't it? Mm. I think mm. what you said is a spot on what else and, 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 and the other... Um, um a challenge i think for me is what so what and mm. how mm. right so, mm-hmm. okay this is brilliant but how yes, yes. yeah absolutely <laughs> do we need more people do we need a system do we need a brilliant idea so <laughs> how we're gonna do it yes. and i think the younger generation um have a, a, a like we are we are in war for freedom, isn't it? So this is so important that freedom is our advantage. So leverage, use it. That's what I tell my children, even though they're babies. <laughs> but I, I tell them, uh, That's good. T- tell, tell them that from the early age and they'll never, never forget it, right? I always say challenge mommy. So if mm-hmm. you don't agree, you, you, it's, not a, it's not a rule. You make you, a rule. 
you won't say that when they're 16. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully they will have they will enjoy their freedom to make the right choice. Absolutely, no, That's absolutely. What it is about, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Sarah, it's been amazing to talk to you. Thank you so much, right, for today. Um, as always, it's a pleasure. You know, you've got a really good insight and knowledge base around TPRM sustainability and how it can drive um, forward the the world agenda, right, within procurement and supply chain. So. It's always good to hear and talk to you. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. I love the conversation. Love <laughs> to see you again. <laughs> yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, I, I, you know, for everyone listening or, or seeing, just mm. ping me if you have a question, if you want to have a chat. I'm quite open. So, and especially with this uh, new world topics, I'm quite happy to, to, to open the debate, as you say. Fantastic. That's really good, Sarah. Thank you ever so much. Have, have a great have day, a won't day. you? Bye-bye.